Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Here's a headline from you today. 113.3 million XRP moved from Ripple on-demand liquidity corridors to BitGo and Binance. And so it is another headline where we're seeing, of course, massive quantities of XRP flowing. And frankly, you see this all the time all over the world, but it's just an interesting time to be an XRP holder because there has never been this much global attention around XRP. Now, mind you, at this point, uh, we, we've we, you know, XRP hasn't even hit its its uh, its all time high of close to four dollars. I, I understand that, but there has never been this much money flowing around XRP. There are millions of more people this market cycle than they're trading it right now and, and holding it, speculating than there were last market cycle. Think about that: millions of people. This this thing is just waiting to ignite. I personally believe. I, I'd be shocked if it didn't hit its all-time high and then ultimately enter a new realm of price discovery at some point uh, yet to be determined in the future. I'd be absolutely shocked, especially if we didn't see that this market cycle. I'd be blown away. Uh, but we are seeing that adoption. In the meantime, all of the volatility is good. In fact, I'm going to share with you some figures that, that are going to make you feel better. So if you've been in the space for a while, it'll be just additional reassurance of how normal all of the volatility for XRP and Bitcoin and crypto is. And if you're brand new... Uh, hopefully this helps you tremendously because there are so many people that are new to crypto and, and uh, are also subscribing to this channel. I think you need to be aware of this. I think it'll help you. But uh, I do want to be clear at the outset, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I uh, say are right. I'm just an enthusiast who makes YouTube videos as a hobby. That's all that's going on here. Oh, and I do want to make sure I give a shout out to Boncrip XRP for sending me that story about... Uh, 113 million XRP going around on-demand liquidity corridors. And, and I will say this too, um, and I don't want to read through the whole thing here, but uh, I just want to kind of make a broader point about it. But as far as on-demand liquidity, it is fascinating that, yes, uh, like, uh, it, it's a thing. Like, on-demand liquidity, absolutely, it's functioning today. But still, mo even within these corridors that, that, are, that end up being cited in this article, because they do, they do talk about like Bitso, which is a Mexican, Ripple's Mexico-based uh, partner, exchange partner, and Bitstamp, which has a couple locations, including in the United States. Uh, yeah, you're talking about those corridors, but even so, most, most of the, the activity, it still is speculative, which I still think kind of speaks to uh, the nascency of the asset class. Um, oh, and I want to mention this too before I forget. Coin market cap, many of you may be aware. A couple weeks or so ago, they began reporting false data about uh, XRP circulating supply, which made the calculation for XRP's market cap incorrect because the way that crypto uh, indexes have chosen to to tabulate what market cap is, the way they calculate it is you take the circulating supply and then times it by the, the current market price. Well, what they had was a false circulating supply that it was showing as 35 billion when the real number is 46 billion. And so you take that lower number times the, the, mar uh, the market rate of XRP and you get a much lower market cap, which made uh, XRP's position in terms of market cap much lower, which means that you were doing a disservice to everybody that's coming to your damn site for two weeks. And they knew it. I don't know why it took them so long. I will never understand probably because they're not going to share with us why they were so slow about it. Because they could have at least said, hey, we're working on it. This is a slow thing. This is something that, that needs to be adjusted. But they didn't even do that. And also from the coders that I've, I've read opinions from, it's, it's something that could have been very quickly and easily fixed. They were just pulling uh, incorrect data. That, that's all that happened. Uh, but anyway, it is nice to see that it's actually fixed. So I did want to highlight that real quickly. Now, into the stuff about volatility, though. Can we talk about that a little bit? Um, look, as I, as I record this, XRP is at $1.24. And if you care to look at your screen, uh, what you'll see is... Uh, an XRP price chart showing the entire history of XRP price action. And I still feel like when you look, if you look at a chart like this, it doesn't really do it justice because look, XRP has been traded eight and a half years, right? And so if you look at most of where I'm waving my, my uh, mouse around here, so say from the beginning of time, which would have been, uh, well, the early stay track, it looks like it's August of 2013, but it was being traded um, beginning in either late December of 2012, or it could, I think that's correct. It was either that or, or uh, very early January. At least that's when the final version came out. Maybe it took a while to hit, hit exchanges. And I wasn't around in crypto back then, so I, I don't really know. But if you look from the beginning of XRP uh, being recorded in price charts all the way up till 
I mean, close to the end of uh, 2017. I mean, you, you could, well, okay, maybe not the end, but say like March of 2017. Like, it looks like a flat line, right? Now, mind you, if you were to zoom in over that time period, it's going to look rocky as heck. It's just when you zoom out, you get kind of a bigger picture. So uh, let me switch to like a 30-day chart for XRP. Do you see, see how rocky this is or switch to 90-day? Like here's a 90-day chart. See that? This is still, in terms of the chart formations, this is what it would have looked like for all of those years. It's just, again, when you zoom out, you can't really tell that. But frankly, the volatility is your friend. And I think most people, it's like they're, they're intimidated by it. And I am not. You must understand that without this volatility... It would be impossible to realize gains. And think about this. If you're, if, if logically you're having trouble wrapping your brain around, let's let's put it in simple terms here. Let's say that there were no volatility in XRP at all. Would you buy it? Well, I mean, I guess if you want a certainty that uh, you know it's, it's yeah, you have a set price like it, that would really be quite the store of value. Uh, if you want something that's going to go up, no, you would not purchase it because if you buy it with the market rate today and there is no volatility whatsoever, then it's just going to stay what it is today, which is as I record this now, buck twenty three. Well, I mean, fine for people that want that, but if you want to, you know, increase your net worth, you want volatility. Volatility is what makes it possible for price to go up. Uh, and, and so it's a good thing. And, and let me just give you a good example, because there was this uh, interview, um, which I think is really enlightening. And the way that this is articulated, this idea of volatility being good, it's among the best that I've seen. And so I wanted to share it on my channel. And this comes from uh, Mark Yusko who is uh, one of the founders of Morgan Creek Digital, uh, so a, a hedge fund. And uh, he was being interviewed on CNBC. And I've actually been following Mark for quite some time. He's just a pleasure to listen to. Um, he, he gets the big picture stuff. Uh, he understands, he, oh, he understands markets, that's for damn sure. And so uh, he was talking specifically about Bitcoin, but understand that the whole market for crypto moves in tandem. So this absolutely applies to XRP. XRP is tremendously volatile. Right. But that's a good thing. This is not a complaint. I want this. Like people, people cite the volatility of crypto as some sort of negative. And I'm like, you do not know what you're talking about. <laughs> if it, the less volatile, the less interested I am in it. What are you talking about? No. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, Bitcoin is an asset that has compounded at 223 uh, percent per year for 11 years. Think about that. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Any asset that increases in price to that degree has to have volatility. And, and interestingly, check this out, and this is the point that, that he brought up, uh, Bitcoin actually has the same volatility as Amazon stock. And I thought that was an interesting fact. I was like, okay, lay some numbers on me. And he sure did. Um, Amazon, every year, for its 24 years of life, has had a double-digit drawdown, including this year. Every, think about that. Every single year, double-digit drawdown. <laughs> including this year. Um, the, in fact, and check this out, the average drawdown in Amazon stock is 31%. Now, so think about that. That's that's kind of scary. Imagine you're holding Amazon stock down 31% and you, deal, you have to deal with a drawdown every year and the average one is you lose about a third of what it's worth? Oh my gosh, the emotions. What are they going to do? Um, and now five times in the 24-year history... Uh, the uh, the drawdown was over 50%, five times out of 24 years, 50%. And twice down over 90%. Starting to sound like crypto, isn't it? It kind of does, doesn't it? And and so so check this out. Here's a quote from Mark Yusko. And, and just listen to this and just take this point to heart. Because I what he's citing here and the idea he's communicating, I believed for the longest damn time. But he just articulated so clearly I went ahead and transcribed this for you. So check this out. Here's what he said. When was the right time to sell Amazon? That would be never. So volatility is not your enemy. It's your friend. You want volatile assets. Now what you want is upside volatility. Downside volatility is painful. But over the long term, holding an asset that has volatility is the whole point of investing. <laughs> you got to love it, right? It's, it's, it's just getting down to brass tacks here. Yes. Uh, no volatility, very bad. Bad place to put, especially, we'll consider that if there's no volatility, my gosh, even if you get the exact same amount in terms of United States dollars or your fiat currency of choice, uh, you're actually losing value, though, because your purchasing power is decreasing due to inflation. So no volatility is actually really, really bad. It is super duper bad. Right? 
um, the, the whole point is to have that volatility. And yes, there are going to be market corrections. Yes, people are going to get shaken out of markets. But that's why I also keep saying trading is stupid. Timing timing markets is really stupid for about you know about a hundred percent of humans. Uh, ninety five percent of traders in the stock market and crypto markets lose money. Th th these are facts. You can look them up. And uh, and and so really, it for me. Um, I don't want to play that game. I don't want to just be a, a, another guy who is part of that statistic. And so for me, what I've been doing is just holding. I've never sold a single XRP. And I, I will, though. I just haven't yet. And I've never taken any crypto and converted it back to United States dollars. Never. Now, I want to. And I plan to uh, sell the vast majority, if not all, of my crypto this market cycle on the way to the top. Uh, but we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Um, we're going to be, I firmly believe, because again, the whole market's moving in tandem. We are still in a bull market. And so I love this volatility. So when we did have that scary drawdown a couple days ago, I hope this can help you understand since I get these facts, I understand this. I did not feel those scary emotions that all those people felt, which, uh, which caused them to panic sell. I didn't feel any of that because it doesn't make sense to feel those things. All the people that sold those Am the Amazon stock at all of those moments for each of the last 24 years because he saw an average drawdown of 31%, 31% decrease, sometimes substantially higher than that. All the people that sold just ate it. They really ate it. And if you just took the time to make yourself aware of the data and uh, refuse to make buying and selling decisions when you're feeling emotional, if you just do that, uh, I, I think that you might have a better time in, like investing in general. So I'm not telling you to buy or sell anything. Uh, I'm just saying in a general sense, if you're going to make financial decisions, it may be best to remove... Uh, emotion from the equation because data tells us that's a bad idea to, to use emotion uh, to determine those things because that's what these people are doing it's like lemmings off a cliff one after another just killing themselves freaking idiots like <laughs> that is not a good idea that is really not a good idea um and so anyway i study he, he framed it so well and uh and just given that this is the, the most crazy volatile asset class on the planet yeah but that's why i'm having so much damn fun <laughs> you know this is incredible here so um, the best is yet ahead, though. As far as XRP, oh, it's going to continue being volatile for the foreseeable future. And I can't wait to, con to, to really, well, I mean, I'll just say this. I'm substantially up from where I purchased it, but I can't wait to get to a point. I'm really excited to get to a point where I do uh, adjust my risk exposure and convert some of that to uh, United States dollars and then invest in, in other stuff that I think is less volatile to preserve it. But for uh, but, but 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 once once this market tanks, which I believe it will, it'll go down another 70, 80, 90 percent, whatever. When that happens, all like new money that I make, that I will want in the vol volatile asset class. So that will go back into crypto, and then the other stuff, <clears throat> because I, I do think diversification is important, and I do think that the, there it certainly makes sense to preserve wealth as it's been uh, accumulated. Yeah, of course. Then I'm going to put it in something that's substantially less volatile. But it doesn't mean I won't continue to take advantage of crypto. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know it's part of balancing a an over one's overall portfolio. So anyway, I'll go ahead and wrap up there though. But it's fun food for thought, is it not? I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.